Well, here we are again, folks. Uh, in my last Airfix catalogue video, I mentioned that I would uh, quite like to work on uh, uh, an Airfix 14XX locomotive. And, well, here it is. Um, this was sent to me by a chap called Neil, who got in touch with me following that video and said, I've got one you can you can have a fiddle around with because it's a non-runner. Um, it's got one or two things missing. Would I be interested in, in having a look at it? Um, and I said, yeah, send it, and we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. It is a non-runner. Full power, it's not a sausage. So we shall take this to bits and see if we can get it working. I am aware that uh, this model has some uh, inherent issues. Um, it's got traction tires on, on the, the middle wheels there, which stupid idea. Um, and I think it has plunger style pickups, which again, <laughs> not a good idea. But we'll see if we can get it running again. Uh, it's a non-runner, so I can't uh, run it back into the shed. So it's just going to have to get shoved. So I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit of an, an adventure with this thing. Um, nice model. Uh, one of the tank filler caps is missing there. And a couple of the buffers at the, at the rear are, are missing. The vacuum pipe. So how do we get into this? Ooh. Ooh, we've got a screw down the chimney. Not done one of these for a while. Lucky I spotted that. I could have been trying to lever this off or something. There we go. Oh my goodness. Well, I didn't realise uh, that. It's got uh, <laughs> it's got a drive shaft from the motor to the gear on the front. The gear's at the front and it is a, a drive shaft with universal joints. Right, let's see if we can get this apart. Um, there's two screws underneath, and that'll be the motor screw. This is similar to the the Daypol N2 I worked on a while ago. Um, so, I'm going to undo this screw here. Something should happen, maybe. Oh, we've got another screw at the front here. Now what happens? Does this come off? Well, it's loose. Oh, something's happening. So there's one of the articulated joints on this little drive shaft. It just pulls out. So there's the gear and the other part of the drive shaft with a, a universal joint. That's an awful lot of engineering. Uh, right, okay, and that has exposed uh, one of the plunger pickups there, another one there. We'll give them a good clean and see how it performs. But how do we get into that one? Pop there, pop there. And out it all comes. And then there'll be clips at the back here as well. There we go. Now it'll all fall apart. And then I'm left with the puzzle of how to put it all back together. Oh, right, there's a bunch of pickups either side. Ah, right, I get it now. I was a wee bit puzzled there. It's all very weird. But first things first, we have to see if this motor actually works. Do we have anything? Yes, we do. So the commutator's not bad actually, but we'll give it a wee clean. So we'll undo this. Not quite sure what this piece is. It certainly makes it easy to get that brush out. It's got a little plastic washer underneath it. Oops. That came out a bit quick. There's a little spring in there. Thankfully the brush didn't come with it. Right, okay. So we shall get them into some contact cleaner. I'll give that a scoosh out. 
and that comes out. Just going to let me get this bearing out. Yep. Okay, there's plenty of oil in the felt oil reserve there, but it doesn't really go anywhere. So we'll get some oil inside the bearing. Pop that back. We shall remag it. There's no way I'm dismantling uh, all this to get the, the armature out. So we'll, we'll clean the, the commutator in situ. Just doing the usual thing with the tea cut. It's way too much tea cut. So we've got some gunk on this I want to get rid of. So an awful lot of congealed oil. Let me get all that out. So I don't think there's any point in having the traction tires on this thing. Um, so I'm going to take them off. Uh, I'm not going to cut them, so I can always put them back on. Now obviously, to get them off, I'm going to have to pull a crank pin so I can get them off. Like so. And now I can get that traction tire off. And I'll get the other one off as well. Like so. So I've removed the traction tyres because I just don't think they're going to do anything but cause uh, pickup problems. Push this crank pin back in. There we go, job done. Right, so we'll go to gear, squish, get rid of all that congealed oil, and then I'm going to clean the inside of the wheels with teacup. Because it is absolutely imperative that the inside of these wheels is kept really clean. Okay, so wheels have been cleaned inside and out. Just give them a good blast for that. Have a let that dry. Let's look at these little wheels. Um, these are going to need the same treatment. What have we got in here? Uh, oh my. And squish of that. And we'll get the monkey brush onto it. Where is it? So I want to get all the crap out of the teeth of this gear. Okay, so everything is nice and clean. So we can start to think about putting this back together. And need to think about a solution uh, for, for this here. So originally this uh, brush holder, this brass thing coming out of this brush holder, would have had a spring in it called a connector spring and when you put the motor down it would have made contact with the, the uh, pickup strip there um, but I think that almost actually does make contact contact um, and I think the spring is probably just there to you know help maintain a good contact so I've looked online and I cannot get a, a, a replacement connector spring so I'm going to have to come up with something uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a brush spring and I'm going to I've cut two little bits of brass tubing and a little bit of insulating tubing so what I'm going to do is uh, the two bits of brass tubing one is slightly uh, smaller in diameter than the other and is slightly longer in length and that one I'm going to slip on to there and the wider bit of brass tubing will go over both of those like that and basically that's creating a, a little bit of a shoulder so when I fit the spring the spring will maintain contact I don't know how well you can see that and then the insulating tubing 
keep everything there and make sure that none of that touches the chassis and cause a short circuit. We'll get some uh, grease in here from this gear, some PTFE white grease, and then some gear oil. We'll make sure the oil and the bearing is there as well. I think we'll get some molly grease into the joints. Just work it in with a cocktail stick. And that'll then fit into here. Like that. But that's going to have to go right there. So that's going to go in there like so. So I need to get the brushes into this, so I'll take this off just now. And get a spring in there. And then drop the brush in uh, with the worn end sitting on the commutator. <laughs> Come on, stop messing around with me. There we go, that's it. That's the way to push that in. Now let's just make sure that it is making contact. So we should get a beep here. Yep. That one went better. Right. I think what we'll do before we do anything else is remagnetize this. So, connect this up to the controller. There it goes. Originally it didn't have an insulating sleeve like that, but I just worry that the spring could bend and um, touch the inside of the hole there, and that would cause a short circuit. I mean, this thing, the whole design of this thing is fraught with possibilities for, for short circuits. Um, you know, that could touch the chassis there. The bottom of the chassis could come into contact with this strip. Uh, the strip's actually got a plastic covering over it, a clear plastic covering. Um, you know, it's just, it's asking for a short circuit, this thing. So, um, I'll bet you anything, that's a common problem with them. How do we get this back together? So, the wheels have to go in like that. And this little wheel will have to go in there. Again, making sure that plunger pickup is just in the right position. Okay, I've fitted these little metal clips onto the met onto the metal part of the chassis. I mean, they just kind of sit there where I think they're supposed to go. Um, and then I think it's a case of just dropping this on, and then I think I can push the couplings in. Uh, now there's those clips out. Have they gone in at this end? Yeah, they have. Okay. Now, can I get this down and clip it in place? Plunger pickups on this side are in contact. Plunger pickups on that side are in contact. Just push them in like that. So, getting this motor connected with this little spring. And trying to connect the drive shaft as well is going to be fun and games. Get the drive shaft in. There we go. The motor screwed in place. I've just realised I've got the wheels on upside down. <laughs> oh, right. So I'm going to have to do all that nonsense with the couplings again. 
Holy mackerel. Okay, so I have to take all that apart again and get the wheels the right way around. Um, what an idiot. So, we'll pop this on the track and see what it does. Well, it works. I think we'll stick it on the layout and see what it does there. So we'll just pop this on and see what it does. Turn on the power. Okay, it's not running too bad actually, it's a wee bit noisy but you know there's an awful lot of moving parts in there so I was kind of expecting it to make a bit of a racket but uh, yeah it seems to run okay. I think it would run smoother with a, a smooth set of uh, middle drive wheels um, rather than the one with the groove for the, t the traction tyres but I can absolutely guarantee that this thing with the traction tyres on would run horrendous. Um, it would stop in points and it would be a bit stuttery on uneven track so that's why we've left, I've left them off. Um, but no, that's running not bad at all, really. Tea break. Right, okay. Um, we'll give this body a bit of a dust. And uh, it's a real shame about the filler cap being missing. Um, I've had a look online. Nah. Um, Peter Spears does have them listed, but out of stock. So I was just going to leave it, but I think I'm actually going to have a wee go at making one out of Millie Putt. It won't be exact, but I think it'll be better than nothing until uh, a replacement can be found. Right, this isn't fitting on properly. Um, I think it's this thing here. It's... Uh, Fitting on a bit of the body and pushing up, and just it won't sit right at the back. I think there was uh, originally a clip at the back here that's worn away, so I think this is the wrong way around. I can't remember if this is the way it was or not, but I'm going to take it off, I'm going to turn it round so it goes on that way. Whatever this thing does, I have no idea. Um, right, let's try that. Yeah, that's better. We've got all the little pipes connected up and I'm hoping the screw at the front will hold it because they say the clip at the back seems to be worn away if, if there was one. Yeah, okay. Right, I have a couple of spare buffers here. Should push in. From my box of bits. There we are. So, uh, we'll see if we can make a little tank filler cap. What's a fun cup of tea? So, mix up some milliput. This is going to be so small and fiddly, I'm not sure how successful this is going to be. Okay, so the idea of using milliput to, to make the entire filler cap hasn't really worked out. Um, I've made the little, you know, the oval cap itself out of milliput. I've got it stuck here with some black tack onto this tile. And for the hinge and the little catch, I've cut a couple of pieces of staple. Um, you know, just staples like that. Just cut them, bent them into shape, and I think that'll work. So there we are. I don't know how well you can see that, but I think that'll make a, a passable little uh, filler cap. Um, once it's uh, painted up and we'll stick it onto the body with a little bit of black tack so it can easily be removed. So there we are, here's my little tank full of cap uh, made out of a, a blow of milliput and a staple. Right, we're done. Let's get this on the layout and give it a wee run. Okay, let's bring it out.
So there we are, that's Neil's Airfix Class 14XX locomotive uh, running again, uh, complete with two uh, tank filler caps and buffers front and rear. It's not the quietest thing, it's quite noisy, uh, it's not the greatest runner in the world, but um, you know, if I'd, if I'd left the traction tyres on it, it just would have stopped all the time in points and would have hesitated in parts of the track. Um, it would have had better traction, but you know, I would rather the locomotive actually ran um, than having a little bit of a traction issue. Just uh, don't give it too big a load and it'll be fine. But ideally, you would want to replace that, that uh, the drive wheels. Not the easiest locomotive to work on this, very fiddly, quite a complex design. You know, I think it's uh, way over engineered, but uh, interesting nonetheless. But uh, I wouldn't want to work on another one in a hurry. Right, okay, we shall get this packaged up and sent back to Neil. Catch us later, folks.